Okay, so this is supposed to be a, a chit chat, get ready with me, but I was chit chatting too much and wasn't getting ready. So then I stopped chit chatting, went to get ready, and now I'm already ready and I didn't finish my story or even start it. So this is just gonna be a chit chat, okay? Even though I do love chit chat, get ready with me, and I did film everything, so I may try to edit it so that like you can see me get ready because I just love watching people get ready on YouTube. And so I may like edit it like that, but if I don't, don't get mad at me because who wants to edit for 15 years? Not me. All right, so anyways, let me start from the beginning of the story. I'm talking about fasting. I'm talking about fasting. When I talk about fasting, I'm not talking about fasting like intermittent fasting, you know, 16, 8, or 24. I'm talking about fasting for Jesus Christ, okay? And so there are tons of benefits to fasting that like natural physical benefits to fasting you lower inf inflammation you improve um, insulin sensitivity it's really really good for your gut health fasting is just very very good one of the best things for your body to eat is its own fat okay but we're not talking about that right now that's a whole another video that you can find on another youtube channel we're talking about fasting for Jesus Christ, specifically my story and how I got into it. Last year, and I'm standing up like this because for some reason, whenever I try to tell this story, the, the video ends up being 65 years long. So last year, around February, I was at my grandparents' house and, oh no, I was at my uncle's house with my grandpa. And I'm like on Instagram scrolling. At this point in my life, let me paint, let me paint the, the picture. I was, miserable like i was feeling so low so defeated i felt like a loser i felt like a bum i felt like a disappointment walking like if a disappointment could talk that's how i felt i felt just so unfulfilled so miserable like there's i can't think of the right language to describe just how low I felt. Like if I could get into the ground and get under the ground, that's how I felt as a person, right? And so I'm on Instagram and one of the girls that I follow, and I don't watch a whole lot of people's stories because a lot of people don't talk about nothing in their story anyway, but I'm watching this one girl's story and she's like, join me for this fast. And I was like, now, I knew that she believed in Jesus Christ, but I didn't know she believed in Jesus Christ like that. And I was like, okay. Mind you, the reason why I wanted to fast, right, is because I'm looking at this girl that I knew I went to college with, with her, right? And she had started a swimmer brand. And her swimmer brand did very, very well. And it was like gorgeous swimwear. And they made all this money. And like in my eyes, they were just so successful. And they were like the it girls. It was her and her best friend. And like her best friend was my roommate in college. So she was like always in our room. And like they're super, super like cool, smart, pretty, awesome, all the good things, girls, right? And so she posts this fast. And I'm like, oh, I'm doing it because she has lots of money. And she's probably super fulfilled and, and, and happy in life. I just assumed that off of one post, like what? So, <laughs> I'm so dramatic. So I'm like, I, I respond and I'm like, I wanna do the fast girl. And she's like, okay, um, send me your email. So the, um, so the ministry sends an email. So Tiffany sends you this email and she tells you like all the details of the fast. She tells you that we're fasting from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. She tells you that we're gonna pray in the morning at 4 a.m. And I was like, who? Who's praying at 4 a.m., babe? Because it's not going to be me. I can tell you that for sure, okay? You're cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. And she just has all this information about the fast. And, she's, and then at the end of the email, she also adds a bunch of prayer points and tips. And so one of the tips was like, don't, um, don't spend a lot of time on social media. Don't spend a lot of time in conversation with a whole lot of people. Of course, don't tell anyone about your fast. She said, don't go out a whole lot. Just let this time be for you reading the word of God and for you praying and that's it. So I'm reading it and I'm like, um, no, I'm gonna keep going out and I'm probably gonna be on social media a lot, but I definitely will not eat. And for me personally, I didn't even consider, I didn't even consider, I didn't even consider waking up at 4 a.m. praying. You're nuts. And so she would send like replays 
So she would send like replays of the 4 a.m. prayer like to guide you through all the prayer points and everything and to highlight different scriptures that we should be reading dur during the fast. So I completely disregarded that entirely. All I did was fast from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Now at the end of the welcome email, she also included um, a portion of her ebook. And in her ebook, she was talking about how how she saw the power of fasting displayed. And basically the long story, as short as possible, Siki, come on, don't ramble. Um, her daughter was kidnapped by her father, by her BD. And um, basically she like called the authorities and she was like trying to call call lawyers and everything. And everybody was like, well, um, he's technically her dad. So like he's her father. So like he can do this, like it's his kid too. Nobody cared about her problem. This seriously like impacted me because I met a girl years ago in 2021 who went through the exact same situation, except her child was four. And she was like, yeah, I sent my kid on vacation with, with my BD. And the next thing I know, he's telling me I'm never, I'm, I'm never gonna see her again and that she's gonna live with him. And she, basically she told me it took her five years and tens of thousands of dollars to get her kid back. I was like, wow, like I was, I don't have a kid, but I could just not even imagine that pain. And her daughter was four. So anyways, the girl Tiffany was talking about her experience with that. And she was like, first things first, I understood that this was a spiritual battle. And she was like, so I didn't, she said, even though I wanted to act out physically and go beat him up or whatever, she said, I knew that that wouldn't help me. She said, I also knew that this was an attack because she had this, her millions conference, right? And it's like this entrepreneurial conference. And so she's like, so I immediately started looking at this with spiritual eyes. I'm paraphrasing her book. And I'm reading and I'm like, oh my gosh, like it's late at night, but I'm like locked in on this book. I'm like so stressed out right now. And so she's like, so I took out my weapons and my weapons were worship. My, my, my weapons were prayer and fasting. My, my weapons were telling friends who would pray, P-R-A-Y, and not friends who would pray, P-R-E-Y. And my weapon, what was her last weapon? Worshiping over worry telling friends I would pray or not pray, fasting. Oh, and she also told her son, her son was like young. So she told him like, hey, your sister's coming home. He would get all excited. The kids believe anything, right? And so he's like, yay, you know? And so she would like worship every hour on the hour and just like keep her faith like super, super high so that this thing didn't fall through. But I'm reading it at the time with carnal eyes and I'm like, girl, you doing all that? Get a gun and go shoot him. Like, what are you, what are you doing? Like, um, hire someone to go where he is and kill him. Like, what are you talking, what are you, your kid? Your kid? Like, I have a dog who I adore. Like, and I couldn't imagine my, I was just reading it. I'm just like tripping. I'm like, this girl's crazy. What's wrong with her? All right, she keeps saying that. I have spiritual eyes, this is a spiritual attack. I'm like, girl, this is happening in the natural. Your natural baby is with a man that did not have primary custody over her. And like, no one's trying to help you. So you have to take matters into your own hands, obviously, right? So I'm reading the book and I'm just like, it's just not clicking in my head. Long story short, she ends up getting her, Chanel. Long story short, she ends up getting her kid back in like seven days or 10 days, like a short period of time. <clears throat> and it was just an amazing testimony to me because she did everything the right way. Like she went to the Lord first and got his okay. Um, she prayed, she fasted, she worshiped, she finally found a good lawyer, like everything worked out. Um, it, was, it was a beautiful story to read. I suggest everyone go, go and get the book. And so by the time I finished reading, um, by the time I finished reading that story, I was like, oh, I'm gonna fast. Cause at first I was like, maybe I won't fast. Maybe I will fast. By the time I was done, I was like, oh, I'm fasting. Cause this girl has power. When I started fasting, I was not fasting with the intention of getting in alignment with God and like, hearing the voice of God. No, 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 no. I read that story about that girl get, get, getting her kid back and not having to shoot anybody and not having to pull up to her at school and stuff her in a car real quick. And I was like, oh, she's got power. Like, I just knew that she had power. 
and that she had backing, right? And even if I didn't have the language for that at the time, I understood that. And so that's what inspired me to fast at the time, right? So this is why I'm fasting because I want money and because I want power, okay? So I fast and nothing happens. I don't eat from 6 a.m. to 6 p. from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. and nothing happens. Excuse me, um, I want a refund. Like, what's going on? So, I fast, and then that evening I get an email like, "We completed our fast, woo!" And she's like, "Join us for our Year of the Bride fast." And I'm like, "Yes, I will certainly join you because I need to be married." That's it, I need to be married. That's the key, I gotta be married. And so she's like, join us for, for, for this fast. We meet every week on YouTube at 12 p.m. to pray and to, and I teach. And um, we contend for the word of God that 2022 is the year of the bride, right? So um, I, I'm like, great, I'm gonna do this fast. And it's every Tuesday from 6 a.m. to 3 p.m., right? So now I'm fasting for power, for money, and for marriage. And so, I do the fasting, but I wanna pause. During this time of fasting, looking at me, you would never know I was fasting because I was living my life the exact same. If anything, I became worse. I started bartending around this time as well, so now I'm drinking like a lot, like to the point where it's like, man, was everything okay? Like I would be at work like lit. Anyway, so then I've been fasting for a couple months at this point and we're in May, right? At this point, I had started the fast in like, I think, March, right? March, yeah. I started fa I started fasting in March. My life gradually got worse. Uh, I started getting really irritable, very, very angry. Um, I started just like just the things that used. So the things that would normally roll off my back now. Uh uh. I'm cussing you out over it because you're pissing me off. Like I just became so angry, so easily frustrated. Like I just became like. And I'm a happy person, but I just, during that time, I was pissed off. I started drinking a lot. I started going out way too much. Like, I was just doing the most, okay? Doing way too much. I broke my celibacy during this time of fasting. I haven't been celibate for about four years. Uh-huh. Broke it during the time of fasting. My, my life at this point, it looked like, so why did we fast again? Did we fast for money, power, and marriage? Or did we fast for depression, anxiety and frustration because it's giving the latter right and so i was just like super frustrated in life i would be in the middle of fasting and out of nowhere i'd be like bro why am i doing this fast why am i not eating all day long to not get any results and i'll just get pissed off like i would just get so pissed i'm, like, I'm gonna eat right now because this fast is pointless why am i fasting for marriage, that's stupid. Who fasts for marriage? Like, and then I'd be like, well, you know what? It's 12 noon. I might as well just keep fasting until three, right? And so I'll fast week after week after week. So committed to this fasting. Sometimes I would fast from that night. I would be outside, lit, drunk, turned up, right? It was a mess. And so everything got worse. <laughs> it was a mess. I started to feel a little bit more anxious because I didn't know how I was gonna get myself out of this situation, right? So I started to feel a little bit numb, and when I wasn't feeling numb, I would feel very, very frustrated, like I don't know how to get myself out of this, because now I have a bad habit, right? And I'm like, I don't know what to do, like I have to stop this, I have to break this habit of going out all the time, I have to break this habit of drinking constantly. The next month in June, I'm about to go out one night, right? And I already knew I had to stop this. Like, I already knew I had to stop. I had called my pastor one morning, still drunk, from the night before, having a complete emotional outburst. And he was like, you're trying to heal yourself, but you're using alcohol and sex, and that's not helping you. And I was like, yeah. He's like, let's get some therapy. I was like, well, actually, I was in therapy, but my therapist pissed me off, and so I fired her. And he was like, okay, well, let's find another one. So like the next week after I talked to my pastor, right? After I knew what was going on, like, because I, I didn't have the language for I'm trying to heal myself with sex and alcohol. I didn't have that language. I just didn't. Um, I didn't have the, the language for pretty much anything at this point. And so 
um, I'm just like really frustrated. I'm spazzing out, right? And the next week I said to myself, this has got to stop. This is getting ridiculous. This is getting out of hand. You know what, Siki? Next week, you can go out, you can turn up, you can get lit, but guess what? We're done after next week. That's it, okay? We have got to get serious. So that morning, I work out. I spent, like a, I spent the whole day with my little cousin so I didn't feel guilty about avoiding them that, that night. I just was like super, super serious about, you know, about going out that night because I knew I, I only had one more night for fun. I also understood repentance at this point because even though I didn't know a lot about my faith or I didn't know as much about my faith as I thought I had known, right? I understood that once I repented for all this stuff, I couldn't keep doing it. And I was, and I was very open with God and I was like, God, I would love to pray to you. I would love to spend time with you, but I can't spend time with you because I refuse to repent. So I'm just going to hang out over here and turn up. And once I'm ready, I'll come to you and we can hang out again. But I'm not about to repent. And the next week I'm repenting again. And the next week I'm, I'm repenting. No, that's dumb. That's stupid. So um, I told myself, like, you have one more weekend and then we have to get serious. Girl, tell me why that day I started to feel really, really sick. <laughs> I started to feel really, really sick. I had plans for like 7.30 for the pregame. And by 3 p.m., I'm feeling like tired. Like I need to just lay down. My head hurts. Is anybody else, is anybody else cold? It just started to feel real like, everybody just be quiet, right? So I drop off my cousins. I go home to get ready. And I'm walking into my room and I feel so tired, you guys. I literally had to lay down. Right, like I can feel it just talking about it. I had to lay down. I wake up three hours later and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to really rush and get ready. I have to rush and get ready. Like, I gotta go out tonight because this is the last weekend I can have fun, right? And so I'm trying to get myself out of the bed, but I feel weak. My whole body starts to hurt from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. I'm not kidding you guys. From the top of my head to the soles of my feet, I was in pain. Like. Not a normal pain. I mean, my body was pulsating in pain. That's how much pain I was in. My actual hurt. Like, I was in so much pain. And so at one point, I'm sitting in bed and I'm like, whew, I don't think I can go out anymore. Whew, I, I'm in pain. I'm like, I'm literally that, like panting in pain. I take my temperature and I'm at 102.5. And I'm like, 102.5, that is really sick. I'm not that sick. Like I'm sick, but I'm not 102.5 sick. I take my temperature again, 103. Now I'm starting to get pissed off because why is my temperature 103, right? So then I take it a third time, it just says high. The thermometer literally just said hi. Now I'm like, all right, okay, God. Okay, God, I hear you. I hear you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm sorry. Everything's going to stop. I, I, I repent. I'm sorry. You can heal me now. Thank you so much, right? I'm just like immediate because I know when I started, when I get sick in my body, when I get an injury and that kind of stuff, that for me personally, I know that to be judgment, okay? You are in trouble with God, so you better tighten up and tighten up quick, right? And even though I was I was backslidden at that point, I knew, girl, get it together and get it together quickly, okay? And so I'm like, I'm like, oh my gosh, like let me uh let me repent, let me um, read some Bible. Where is my Bible? Um, how do you repent again? You know what I mean? I'm just like feeling very like, I have to do this quick. Like I don't have a lot of time. The next day, I, of course I test positive for COVID. My cousin tests positive for COVID. My other cousin tests positive for COVID. My mom tests positive for COVID. I got everybody sick. And I felt so bad because I'm like, this is literally all because I was in sin. And not every illness is because you're in sin, but I knew this illness to be judgment and I knew what I was looking at was, was the consequence of my actions. And, and, th and that consequence didn't stop with me, it affected my family. So I'm feeling really, really crappy physically, spiritually, and emotionally because everybody's all sick, everybody has COVID, everybody's walking around here, can't stand up, you know, having to sleep all day long. And so that's when I said, all right, after I'm well again, 
I'm going to act right, God. I'm going to act right. I, you got, look, heard you, got it, crystal clear. And so I did stop drinking um, at first, but I did, like, recommit to celibacy. I just, like, started reading the Bible. Um, I got really serious really, really fast, okay? And so once I got back from vacay, I knew I had to, like, get serious. And so I, like, went to God, and I'm like, God, where do I start? Like, how do I get back right with you? And he was like, I want you to go back and watch those videos. So at this point, I'm still participating in all the fasting, but I hadn't watched any of her teachings. So I'm about, I want to say I'm like, I'm like four months behind or five months behind. I was like maybe even six months behind. I was really, really far behind. And so I went and I watched all of her videos that I had missed. I took notes. I read the scriptures, I prayed the scriptures, I repented earnestly, and I began to see a lot of changes in my soul, okay? After I repented and everything, and I really started to prioritize actually studying the Bible and stuff, then when I would do those monthly fasts with the ministry, um, I, would get, I would get up at 4 a.m. and I would pray. I started um, really, really being intentional about my fasting time, meaning before I would be on social media just scrolling until 3 p.m. or until 6 p.m. Now, and like trying to not feel the, um, the hunger or trying to keep myself busy by like taking a walk or running errands, now I'm intentional about really being in my Bible during this fast. Like I'm intentional when someone pisses me off, I'm like, okay, Love, joy, peace, patience. Love, joy, peace, patience. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm really, like, trying to, like, lean into the fruits of the Spirit, you know? And then on top of that, I spent, now I would spend time with God. Even my time with God felt different because instead of me, instead of every time um, we spend time together, I'm going to him like, hey, can I have this? Can I have that? Can I have this? Can I have that? Now I'm going to God and I'm just listening. You know what I mean? Like I'm literally, I'm just listening for him to speak to me in some way. That's it. I'm not asking for anything. And I'm telling you, you guys. My cat just opened the door. And I'm telling you, you guys, my life started to change. Like my life started to change. I started seeing attacks happen in front of me that were meant for me because my soul was starting to change right and it was so cool like it was just like it really did trip me out like, it really did encourage me and um you know I, at this point i can't listen to secular to secular music anymore all the music i used to love and listen to non-stop now i'm like mm -mm, i just i can't hear this i cannot hear this right now i just can't right i had start i had stopped drinking because i remember i had gone out with one of my friends and i drank too much and before you know if i drank too much i would just ignore it i'd be like i didn't do that i didn't say that and i did not drink too much i literally only had one shot of tequila that's it where in reality i'd said that i did that and i had about six shots of tequila you know what i mean um but this time I had gone out with her and I hadn't gone out in a while. And I remember the next day I felt so bad. And I was like, I never ever want to drink ever again. And I went on, on a fast of my own for repentance. And I just prayed and I repented constantly and I cried. And I was just like being really, really honest with God. Like, I don't want to be like this. Like, uh uh, that's not cute. So, oh, my camera died. But I was going to say this one last thing. Like I had said in the beginning, I didn't take fasting seriously. I just did it because I wanted money, power, and and money, power, and marriage, right? And that's all I cared about. And, be, and I wanted the, those things because I was tired of feeling like a loser. I was tired of feeling like a bum. I was just, I thought that those things would be the solution to the anguish and the frustration and the defeat that I felt, right? But then as I'm fasting, I noticed, okay, you're not making any more, any, any more m money. You're not, you know, any more powerful that you can tell. You are not any closer to marriage. If anything, you've cut off every nigga that was in your phone, right? And, um, and I couldn't figure out why I still felt so accomplished and so at peace with, with this fasting. The reason why I felt so accomplished and so at peace is because I had understood, I finally, it had finally clicked that because, because I was fasting, 
I have weakened my flesh, right? I've starved out my flesh. So my desires, my wants, which were my God for so long, my timeline that was my God for so long that was telling me I was so far behind, that was my God for so long. Now my God is the only true and living God, right? So now my eyes are shifted from what I want to who God is, right? And my and my prayers are shifted from God, I need this and God, I need that to God, what are you saying to me? Or God, what should I be praying for right now? You know, it just completely shifted. It just completely shifted my focuses and my intentions. Another good example is that like, in my career, like I'm an actress, I just wanted to be famous. Like I did not care. Of course I want to do great work, but I wanted to do great work for the sake of being famous, right? And I felt so much pressure in my career because of that. And I'm like, oh, I'm this age, like, oh, I need to be famous, I need to make it, right? Whereas now I want to do great work. I want to audition. I want to ha- I want to get callbacks, I want to get cast, I want to work, right? But most importantly, I want to make an impact. My goal now is not to be invited to every audition because I know every project is not for me. There are some projects I should have absolutely no parts in. And so all the rejection in the beginning that seemed like, oh my gosh, everything's falling apart, this isn't working out, it was actually divine protection. Like you, when you fast, it's like the Lord opens up your eyes and you can see that even when you were so idolatrous, even when you were so prideful, even when you were so cocky and conceited, God's grace and mercy covered you the whole way. Even when you were so self-centered, when you were so rebellious, God's grace and mercy was right there beside you the whole, I'm about to start crying, was right there beside you the, the whole time. Like, I can't cry, I can't, I'm gonna this makeup, I have a self tape, hold on, get it together. But um, when you fast, God opens your eyes and he shows you that. You know, so it's important that we all fast. Like, it's so important. If you spend too much money, if you have no discipline in your spending, you need to fast. If you're a hoe, you need to fast. Like, some pe- sometimes people look at these things, especially like spending a lot of money, and they look at like hoeing and stuff. It's like, oh, I'm just young, lol. I just love sex, lol. But it's like, no, like, if you're hoeing, you have a problem and you need to get it fixed. And the only one that can fix that thing inside of you is God. If you overshare in conversations, I used to overshare ridiculously. When I think about the way I've spoken to people, I'm like, why would you tell them that? They were, they're a stranger. You met them two weeks ago, babe. Like, what, what? But I had no discipline. You know what I mean? I had absolutely no discipline. I thought I had discipline because I worked out five days a week. No, I had discipline in one area, but now I have discipline in every area of my life. Like it's, and, my, and, and on top of that, my discipline has actually grown and grown and grown and grown and grown over time, right? Um, my discernment, oh, I could do a whole video. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll do a whole video on the benefits of fasting because I can talk about this literally for the rest of my life. Let this be your sign to fast, go on a fast. If you don't know where to start, just say, God, I want to go on a fast to get in alignment with you and find a scripture and pray that scripture and watch God show out. Like I said, it may not look like how you want it to look, but the thing about it is once you get more in alignment with God, you will still see success on some level. You know what I mean? You will still see fruit on some level. And the thing that fasting helped me to understand so, so well is that had I had the money, had I had the power, had I had the marriage I wanted so badly, all of those things would have been a massive hindrance to me and my faith. All of them. I would have made a God out of my marriage. I would have made a God out of the money. I would have made a God out of the power, right? I would have been out of control. I would have been extremely prideful. Um, Had I had my career the way I wanted it at this age, right? I would have been extremely prideful. I would have been like, yeah, I did this. I did so and so and so and so. But now I feel so much I feel so much appreciation to God that he didn't, that he, that he, that he didn't honor all those prayers. Cause for a long time, I only went to God when I had an audition. You know what I mean? I only went to God when I was waiting to hear back from a, from, um, from a casting call. You know what I mean? Whereas now 
I'm like this with God. I, casting calls are, are cute. I'm so happy I got to audition. I'm happy I got a call back. I'm happy I booked the job. I'm so happy. But most importantly, when I go into these environments, I'm literally going into, the, into these environments looking for someone to minister to. Asking God, how can I minister to somebody today? You know what I mean? Like my whole thought process and desire has completely shifted. It's just so, it's so different. Like, it's just crazy what God can do to you if you just give him a little space. I gave him like this much space. I was like, yeah, I'll do the fast, that's it. And I better have some money, I better have some power, and I better be married with a fat rock on my finger, okay? But I still feel so accomplished. Like, it's so, so beautiful.